Hello everyone, I am Mr. Ashok Kumar. In this video, I am going to briefly explain you about the project Integrating Learning Management System and Faculty Information System uh, using Service Oriented Approach. So in short, we call Learning Management System as LMS and Faculty Information System as FIS. Okay? So please do remember those names. Uh, all I am going to do uh, in this video is uh, briefly explaining you what actually we are supposed to do in this project. I am not going to explain you in detail how actually we are implementing it because there are a lot of other things that you need to learn before understanding this project in detail. So as far as this video is concerned, we will only focus on what are we going to do. Okay, so though most of the things will be abstract, it will not be clear for you as of now. So this video can only be used for uh, zeroth review. Okay, so while you know uh, proposing this project idea to your uh, you know college lecturers, right? Just try to propose it as much as you people can okay uh, as soon as you explain this you know uh, synopsis to your college in the same way i'm going to do it right now uh, definitely they're going to come back with a uh, lot many questions like tell me more about the algorithm or tell me more about the framework or you know what is the input output something like that okay so uh, whatever the question they are going to ask you uh, just reply them saying that you just started to understand this project you haven't completely mastered it okay so you would need around uh, uh, one more day of time to uh, go through the uh, IEEE paper again and then answer their question okay and all those questions should be immediately uh, redirected to me you can get it answered from me and then you people can go back and answer it to your college people okay so uh, please uh, redirect those questions either to uh, my mobile number you can call me and you know uh, get it cleared or you can type all those questions and mail it to me across this email id so i'm going to reply you back okay and then you people can go back uh, to your college and answer those questions okay so uh, before we uh, begin so uh, to give a brief brief uh, you know uh, quick facts about this project uh, uh, i can say that uh, this particular project uh, we are going to use uh, three uh, different uh, technologies or what we can say is algorithms so our project is based on three different core algorithms one is soa and another one is uh, rest and other one is uh, you know json so you don't know what actually these things uh, are as of now okay so i'm just mentioning that you know uh, if they ask you something about the technologies or algorithms so your answer should be your project is based on three th technologies soa rest and json soa stands for you know service oriented architecture so it is soa okay and rest stands for representational uh, state transfer and json stands for uh, you know uh, javascript object notation okay and uh, of course in your project uh, you people are going to write a minimum of 4000 lines of code okay so uh, for each and every lines of code you are going to write so you people will be given a justification so around 4000 lines of code you people are going to write okay and also you are going to use uh, all the latest uh, uh, versions of uh, available technologies in your project okay so you are not compromising in the algorithm you people are using you are not compromising in the technology you people are using and you are not compromising in the code size okay so this is a, a pretty a good project uh, you know where even the size of the project is too big and also the technologies you are using are very newer and it will be adding lot of uh, value to your resumes okay fine guys so let's get started so these are the things that i'm going to explain you now i'm going to uh, state the problem clearly uh, followed by uh, existing system and their drawbacks proposed systems and their advantages uh, and then uh, hardware requirements and software requirements okay now let us start with the problem statement so to understand the problem statement clearly uh, let us first understand what do you mean by learning management system okay so uh, learning management system actually it is a software application uh, used to track uh, the students okay like the course they are going to take and you know the marks the results how much uh, uh, the score each student has uh, you know secured and uh, ratings of each student okay uh, something like that so it will be a completely a kind of e-learning system where each and every detail regarding a particular course will be available in this particular system software system okay 
uh, and on the other end there is something called faculty information system faculty information system is also a software application where uh, it is most of the time concerned with the administrative operations okay say uh, for example uh, how many uh, teaching faculties are there in this particular institution or organization which faculty is you know uh, handling which course what is the success rate of that particular faculty how much amount is been uh, getting paid and what is the feedback of that faculty okay all these things and all will be implemented in a faculty in information system okay so to uh, summarize quickly a uh, faculty information system is concerned more of administrative operations okay and you know and uh, uh, this learning management system is focused more on uh, course uh, and you know uh, the students reports okay so i hope i'm uh, clear with the difference between the learning management system and a faculty information system okay so one thing you need to uh, know here is two uh, learning management system and faculty information system is a two different software applications so they are not you know same okay there are two independent software applications because learning management system will be focusing more on a particular courses and the students reports okay whereas faculty information system will be focusing on the administrative operations so the, the management perspective okay student has nothing to do with the management uh, perspective right okay so these two things happens to be uh, the two different entities so if you want more information about this and if you want any uh, detailed uh, use case for these applications and all so please do contact me offline either through my mobile number or through email id so that i can uh, take you people to more detailed explanation among this okay but now the conclusion is you people are aware of what actually learning management system is and what actually faculty information system is okay and you know remember they are two different entities right now uh, learning management system will be having a separate database and we call it as lms database learning management system database and faculty information system also will be having a different database called administrative database right so learning management system will be accessing the uh, lms database whereas faculty information system will be accessing the administrative database okay so in lms database so we will be most probably having all the course uh, details okay all the students details all the results details okay and all the progress details like this okay whereas in uh, uh, administrative database we will be having the details about you know each and every uh, faculties okay their you know uh, payment details okay their rating their feedback okay and like that all the administrative data will be available in administrative database okay but the problem statement here happens to be you know sometimes learning management system happens to use part of the administrative database okay sometimes not all the times okay sometimes learning management system have to access the administrative database okay like it has to write something to the administrative database or it has to read something from the administrative database something like that okay so this happens to be our problem statement okay say for example if you uh, for example uh, assume that in the administrative database we have the faculty faculty rating module okay where each faculty will be rated okay so how actually the faculty will be rated you know based on the uh, percentage of passed students in this particular subject okay so based on the percentage of uh, passed student in a subject each faculty will be rated okay so where actually we will come to know this data so the student pass or student failed okay this data we will be uh, getting it from the lms data lms database right all the result information we are going to have it in the lms database based on this particular result information okay the faculty rating will be changing okay so the reason why faculty rating will be maintained in administrative database is because based on the rating uh, you might get uh, increment in his salary or something like that which happens to be the administrative job so faculty rating has to be maintained in uh, administrative database okay but the problem statement here is that sometimes learning management system happens to access the administrative database example in which scenario we are supposed to uh, allow learning management management system to access administrative database you know in this example 
whenever you want to update the faculty rating updating the faculty rating will be depending on the result that is available in lms database okay so the result from lms database will be read from uh, read into uh, you know this learning management system and this learning management system will update the faculty rating like this okay this is one example where learning management system is accessing the administrative database okay but as i mentioned earlier so this faculty information system is a different entity and learning management system is a different entity okay how will you provide the communication between this learning management system and the faculty information system okay so this happens to be the problem statement for this particular project okay so i hope i am clear with the problem statement now now let's go ahead and see uh, what are all the existing systems available to solve this particular problem and what are their corresponding uh, drawbacks uh, there are actually uh, three existing systems that the author mentions in the IEEE paper and he also mentions the drawbacks of all these three existing systems. Okay, So let us understand uh, uh, what are they. So uh, this, uh, this is the first existing system. So if you can see towards the left hand side, so these are the references uh, the paper, uh, IEEE author has given. Okay, So based on these references, he says that the first existing system to solve the problem earlier. Okay, uh, just a reminder uh, what actually uh, the problem we stated the problem we stated is some amount of administrative data has to be accessed by the learning management system okay some data acts has to be accessed by learning management system okay in the previous slide i given an example where a learning management system will be writing the data to administrative database okay in other cases it could be reading the data from administrative database uh, into learning management system how will you provide access for learning management system to read the data from administrative database okay so the first existing system here is just a minute let me erase this one okay so the first according to the first existing system what he says is uh, you can use a third party file format exporter okay say for example uh, the data stored in administrative database can be exported into an excel sheet or csv sheet comma separated value sheet okay and then that can be imported into the learning management system it is a straightforward approach right so the data stored in uh, uh, administrative database will be exported into an excel sheet and that excel sheet will be used uh, for importing it into learning management system okay so this is the first approach where these many authors towards the left hand side proposes okay but there are mainly uh, two different uh, uh, disadvantages of this approach okay so the first uh, disadvantages of uh, disadvantage of this approach is that uh, you know the confidential data confidential data cannot be exported cannot be exported okay so what i meant to say is so uh, whenever you are creating an excel sheet from the administrative database here excel sheet uh, from the administrative database if it contains any confidential information like password or something like that you cannot store it in an excel sheet because if you if you export the uh, confidential data into an excel sheet it's like anybody can read it okay like anybody can access it even though if it's in a uh, encrypted format anybody can decrypt it using any of the technologies available okay so so far storing the uh, confidential data in a third party file format is a biggest disadvantage okay we cannot go for that okay that's the first uh, disadvantages of this approach okay and the second disadvantages of this approach is that okay uh, we re we would require a separate export script for a separate uh, you know fis okay so say for example there in a single organization or within a uh, you know trust of an organization okay you can have a multiple faculty information system like this this is one faculty information system like that you can have one more faculty information system you can have one more faculty information system like that okay in case there are multiple faculty information system we would write a separate we would write a separate uh, script separate program okay separate script 
for creating an excel sheet from this uh, database okay so how will you convert the database data into an excel sheet using a script any of the uh, script like Perl script or you know uh, windows batch script mysql script like that okay so in this case we would write we would require to write a separate script for this uh, you know faculty information system a separate script for another faculty information system and all together it's separate script for uh, the third uh, you know faculty information system okay so it cannot be centralized right so uh, these are the uh, uh, two major drawbacks of our first existing solution okay so now let us move on to uh, the second existing solution so uh, according to the second existing solution uh, this is how it works okay towards the left hand side you can see this is the reference given by the IEEE author so this uh, according to this reference the one of the available solution to solve the problem we stated earlier is to have this faculty information system provide an api okay provide an api okay which will be consumed by learning management system right okay so here in this case we are not using a third party file format instead this faculty information system is providing some ready-made function built-in api so that it can be called by the learning management system learning management system will be making a call to this api and this api will be giving the required data to learning management system okay so this api will be communicating with the database and this data will be exported by this api and it will be given to this learning management system okay so this particular solution uh, you know will be solving the first problem okay the first problem we stated earlier is uh, how will you how will you transfer uh, the confidential data okay so confidential data can be easily transferred now because we are not using a third party file format okay we are doing it within a program we can easily transfer the data confidentiality so it solves the first problem okay but the second problem will be still existing okay the second problem we stated was uh, separate okay separate script for separate you know uh, faculty information system okay this problem will be still existing okay meaning uh, one faculty information system will be providing this api okay another faculty information system will be providing another api third uh, uh, faculty information system will be providing another api okay so different faculty information system will be providing different different apis so that cannot be centralized okay so we can conclude that this existing system solves the first problem but still it suffers from uh, the second problem okay now let us move on to uh, the third existing system so uh, this is the uh, see this is the problem that is uh, that i told right now okay this is uh, with respect to the second existing system only so if there is one faculty information system it will be providing you one api okay if there is another faculty information system it will provide you another api okay so this learning management system i have to remember each and every api okay so which is very difficult if the in terms if we have around 50 faculty information system or 20 faculty information system like that okay so we cannot consider this existing system also we are going to rule out okay so the third existing system happens to be uh, the direct communication okay if you can see towards the left hand side according to this particular uh, reference okay uh, the author of this particular paper he is going to propose that you know access the data directly so you can see there is a direct access here okay so the learning management system will be directly communicating with the administrative data in the first existing system we used to uh, export the data into a third party file format and then import it into lms in the second approach the fis provided an api to export the database into lms okay but in the third existing system the author proposes that you know you can ask the learning management system to directly communicate with directly communicate with the administrative data okay so this is actually a straightforward approach but it will be giving you uh, some new disadvantages okay so one of the disadvantages is you need to focus on data integrity okay data integrity will be a major problem okay so the meaning of data integrity is because the sim single database here okay 
has been accessed by both LMS and by N uh, FIS. Okay, so FIS and LMS both can parallelly write the data to the database. So what if they try to write the data parallelly at the same time? Okay, data will lose the integrity. So uh, you know wrong data may be inserted so you can have a different you will end up having a different view of data for faculty information system and altogether a different view of data for learning management system okay so the integrity of the data will be lost okay and majorly uh, one more you know uh, disadvantage what you people will be having is are uh, the centralized concept it will once again not be centralized okay meaning uh, the second problem we were discussing now it still exists okay so if if you have uh, one more faculty information system like this and one more faculty information system and one more faculty information system so you would ask this lms to communicate with each one of them okay so which is once again a very very tedious job okay so the conclusion is that this third approach uh, e will still not be solving our second problem the second problem is still existing along with the second problem one more problem got introduced called data integrity okay so uh, these are the uh, existing systems for our particular project and i also mentioned the disadvantages of each one of them okay okay now let us see uh, the proposed system so what actually we are going to propose to overcome the existing solutions you know so we are going to pr uh, implement a moderation layer okay so this moderation layer will be integrating the learning management system and faculty information system through the concept of service oriented architecture okay so through the service oriented architecture concept we are going to create a moderation layer which can be used to integrate this lms and fis okay so if you can see this diagrammatic representation over there so uh, the existing lms okay and the existing fis so in between we are going to create a layer called moderation layer okay and this moderation layer will be developed using three major technologies or algorithms called soa rest and json okay soa stands for service oriented architecture rest stands for representational state transfer and json stands for javascript object notation okay so uh, let me just uh, write it down here so soa stands for service oriented architecture okay rest stands for representational state transfer okay json stands for javascript object notation okay so using these three major technologies so we are going to create this moderation layer and the main advantages of advantage of this moderation layer is that it can it can communicate between the learning management system and faculty information system okay some faculty information system is going to subscribe for this uh, you know moderation layer learning information system is also happens to subscribe for this moderation layer okay on other words faculty information system is going to publish okay and you know learning management system also it's going to publish okay so meaning learning management system can will be able to write or read the data from administrative database through moderation layer faculty information system will be able to read or write data from lms database okay but it it will be through moderation layer okay so the advantages of this approach is that uh, the confidential data will be easily transferred because we are not using a intermediate file format okay so the problem of confidential data will be solved and also uh, the problem of centralized thing right even that will be solved because if you have fis here okay and if you have another fis and if you have another fis like this okay so no matter how many faculty information system you have okay each one of them will be subscribing to the same moderation layer okay the moderation layer remains the same 
but FIS alone happens to be different okay so the same moderation layer will be able to communicate with any faculty information system okay so it could be uh, implemented in any particular language okay so it, it provides you the language independent also you know uh, the platform independent okay so through this concept of rest and json okay but anyway you people cannot understand the much detailed about uh, rest and json at this point of time so you need to come to a direct conclusion saying that the moderation layer you people are going to develop uh, will be providing you the platform independent and the language independent feature okay meaning no matter how many fis are there no matter where actually fis are been uh, installed no matter in which layer in which language the fis has been developed okay so the moderation layer remains the same single moderation layer will be able to communicate with n number of faculty information system okay so thus providing the platform and the language independent okay but how are we going to create these all those things and all you people will be understanding only after uh, you know we start off with the project classes okay so any any extra questions or any a, any anything your college people are going to ask you in the proposed system right okay just make a note down uh, no, uh, all those questions in the notepad on your, or in your books and you know uh, send it to me in an email so that i'm going to answer it and i'm going to you people can get back to your college at later point of time okay so uh, now uh, let us go to the hardware and software requirement coming to the hardware requirement we don't need any specialized hardware to implement this project all we need is a single machine with a 40 gb hard disk and above okay and a machine with uh, you know 2 gb or you know say it as 4 gb ram or above okay and we need a dual core processor uh, with 1.6 gigahertz or above okay so uh, these are the minimum hardware requirements for our project okay uh, coming to uh, the software requirements uh, here i'm going to tell you uh, the detailed technologies we are going to use in our particular project okay so in our project i can say that uh, the languages we are going to use uh, can be divided into uh, various layers like uh, the front end okay and i can say back end okay database and various tools we are going to use in our project okay so let me give you the detailed overview of about them now so in the front end we are going to uh, use the languages like html css and javascript and in the back end you are going to use java and j uh, JWE covering JSP, Servlet and JDBC okay and in the front end you are going to use additional technologies like Ajax, uh, Skeleton Framework okay Bootstrap Framework and jQuery Framework okay these are the additional things you are going to learn which will be having a lot of weightage for your resumes okay and in the back end you are going to learn a wonderful concept of service oriented architecture SOE okay so along with uh, the rest representational state transfer and along with uh, json so these are the three things that will be adding a lot of weightage for your resumes okay and we will be using a mysql database or we will be using oracle database anything okay and uh, various other tools we will be using is eclipse you know uh, purchase server and uh, there are another server called wildfly okay so and uh, another server called you know uh, some other tools like putty vinacp something like that okay so these are the list of all the uh, technologies we are going to use in our project okay so i think i am very clear with this so any questions you have after watching this video or any questions your college people are going to ask you know uh, just tell them that you are going to read the IEEE paper and you are going to do some research you are going to ask anybody who are expert in that okay and you will be answering all those questions after one or two days of time okay and all those questions should be immediately redirected to me either on my mobile number or on my email address okay do not hesitate to uh, send me whatever questions you have fine thank you so much